The distinction between what I'm calling loaded language and neutral language is one of the key tools that will help us understand these various different uses of scientific language. When I use the term loaded, I mean it in the sense that the term presupposes something substantive that might be questioned. For example, if I say John died last night, that's different from saying that he was killed last night. Killed implies something more specific about the way John died. And that's different again from saying that John was murdered last night, which includes all sorts of assumptions about the way John died. And in addition, uh, a moral judgment about the killing. It was presumed that it was an unjust killing. So this language becomes progressively more loaded as you move from died to killed to murdered. Now, the distinction I want to introduce is a very specific one. And it requires a bit of philosophical terminology. I want to talk about epistemically loaded language versus epistemically neutral language. So what does this term epistemic mean? Well, the root is connected to one of the main branches of philosophy called epistemology. When you study epistemology, you're studying philosophical issues related to knowledge. What is knowledge? What is its nature? What is its origin? Where does it come from? How do we justify our beliefs? Can we demonstrate that we have knowledge? So on. So the adjective form is epistemological. So an epistemological question, say, is a question about knowledge. An epistemological assumption is an assumption about knowledge or about issues that connect in some way to the nature and origins of knowledge. Now, the word epistemic is just a variant of the same adjective but with fewer syllables. Sometimes it's just more convenient to say it this way. But an epistemic issue is just an epistemological issue. They mean the same thing. So when I describe a word or a term as epistemically loaded, I mean that the term presupposes something that has to do with knowledge. This can be a tricky concept, so we'll ease into it. The way I'm going to use the term, the key idea is the notion of evidential support. How much evidence is there to support our belief or acceptance of a particular claim. We can imagine a scale that ranges from lower degrees of support to higher degrees of support. So given a claim like this one, the Earth is round and rotates on, on its axis once every 24 hours, we can ask, does this claim rank high or low on this scale? Do we think we have strong reason or evidence to think this is true? If so, then it'll rank high on the scale. Unless you're a flat earther, this should rank very high. Other claims will rank lower. Just to give an example, there is an interesting hypothesis in the origin of life research called panspermia. Panspermia states that living microorganisms might survive the harsh conditions of space and might be found broadly in interplanetary and interstellar matter. So in principle, they could have drifted to Earth at some point in the past and functioned as the launching pad for organic life on Earth. Now, a claim like this is going to rank much lower on our scale than the claim about the shape of the Earth. But just how low will vary among researchers who will disagree on how much evidence there is or isn't for this hypothesis. But you get the idea. Now, what I mean by an epistemically loaded use of a vocabulary of science term is just this. It's a use that implies something that presupposes something about the degree of evidential support there is for a particular claim. Here are the kinds of terms that we're talking about. Theory, fact, law, hypothesis. We're going to talk about models too, but I'll leave that off the list for now. Sometimes when people use these terms to describe a claim or a belief, when they say, for example, that evolution is a theory or evolution is a fact, the terminology is used in a way that implies something about how strong the evidence is to support the claim. They're using these terms in an epistemically loaded way. Now, if I was to ask you to look at this list of terms and think about the ways that these are often used to imply something about the status of a claim as an object of knowledge and rank order them along this dimension, I'm pretty confident that your ranking will look something like this. I'm confident because I've done this exercise with hundreds of people. Hypothesis consistently ranks lowest. Fact and law rank highest, but there's a split between people over which should rank higher. 
and theory shows up at some intermediate level. When people use the expression, it's just a theory, that's a usage that aims lower. It's what I call a down player. But there are usages that go the other way and use theory as an up player. As we go through the course, I'll show you examples of all these ways that people, including scientists, use these terms in epistemically loaded ways. But the key point I want to make in this video is that there's also a whole other class of uses of all of these terms that are epistemically neutral. To use one of these terms in an epistemically neutral way is to use them in such a way that they don't imply or presuppose anything about the degree of evidential support that a claim has. They're neutral with respect to this question of ranking along this dimension of evidential support. And by the way, this ordering I have here, theory, fact, law, hypothesis, this is arbitrary. It's just the order I'm planning on working through these concepts in the course. I'll say one last thing before we move on. The epistemically neutral senses of these terms are by far the most important senses when it comes to understanding scientific reasoning and thinking critically about science. This is where all the action is, not the loaded senses. They have their place, but when historians and philosophers of science want to talk critically about science and scientific reasoning, they're almost always using neutral senses of these terms. So this distinction actually gives us a kind of skeleton roadmap for the course. For each of these terms, I'm going to introduce both the epistemically loaded meanings and the neutral meanings of the term. The loaded meanings are very important to recognize, but the neutral meanings are the real gateway into the interesting issues in the philosophy of science. And for this reason, they're the ones that I'll spend the most time on. 